Now, GOM TV, we are getting so far in that as well. Everything is just wrapping up all at once, along with the Pro League playoffs are just about to start too, by the way. And wow, that's pretty exciting. Uh, for GOM, we have Iris against, for some reason I'm getting a brain fart here and I can't think of it, but uh, the other side, let's talk about that first. Uh, we have July Zerg against Flash. Poor July Zerg. Oh my god. I wish that he would get top three. I'd love for him to go to BlizzCon and hang out with that guy. He is the most mannerful, nice guy, uh, to foreigners at least, in Korea for uh, the pro gaming scene. Very friendly guy. Right up there with, like, Songho. And uh, it would be great to see him beat Flash, but it's Flash and it's July Zerg, so I'm pretty sure July Zerg's going to take fourth place here. Now, the other side, it was Effort against Iris. And, uh... You know, two CJ players, which is pretty interesting because uh, Savior's a champion last year, so he's already going to BlizzCon. And then we have Iris versus uh, Effort. And realistically speaking, with July Zerg on the other side, we could definitely see both those guys going through. So that's three CJ members. And they're also inviting four foreigners, one of which has to be Idra, or they're insane. So that's going to be probably four CJ players at BlizzCon. So everyone make sure that you get out your CJ shirts because... I mean, it's, it's going to be CJ Con basically. Um, it's going to be an exciting GOM Finals, an exciting Top 8 for both Star Leagues. And in the meantime, we get to watch the Pro League playoffs, which is going to be awesome because, you, you know, the teams aren't playing just once. It's going to be a best of seven, then another best of seven. And then if one team won each of them, there's going to be like this super-duper ace match where it all comes down to one game. That is awesome. That is going to be so exciting. I cannot wait to see the unlucky souls, or maybe lucky souls, I guess half the time lucky, who get put into that match. Probably the, the most pressure you could ever feel in Korea is playing the final match to decide whether or not your team wins the most important league. Uh, wow, we're going to see some amazing champions go at it there. And, of course, this little bracket, this round of four bracket, there's Samsung, STX, CJ, OGN. Uh, those four teams are basically in a bracket, and they'll play each other. And then the winner of that is going to go up against Hua Sung Oz, a.k.a. Jadong. And the winner of Jadong and those four teams is going to go up against the death machine of SKT1. But it is best of seven, so SKT1 can't quite abuse the ridiculous skill of their three best players. So I don't know. We'll have to see how that turns out. Speaking of SKT1 players, though... If you haven't been watching Heritage League, what have you been doing? Because Boxer is playing, along with a lot of old guys that we don't get to see much anymore. And Boxer, you know, he played a horrible, horrible game last week. He, he made this horrible mistake against 4GG. Uh, it made him lose the game completely. Uh, just sending too many tanks over there. Really amateur mistake. And Boxer knew it, luckily. I was scared for a minute. They were like, wow, what's wrong with you? But he said right afterwards in interviews, he's like, oh my god, just forget about that. I played so bad. That was so stupid. All right, thank God, Boxer knows. Now, Boxer just played two games in Heritage League in his group, and he won them both, okay? The first game was against Reach, and when I was watching this, Boxer went one factory expansion, which we don't see out of Boxer, you know? We have not seen that in a super long time out of Boxer. It's not his style, really. The map was Python, and Boxer kind of just set up a siege line and uh, expanded to one of the corners. So... Reach kind of went in, killed Boxer's entire army. At that point, I was just like, ah, oh, you know, Boxer, you're so bad. But Boxer, he came back, and he just macroed and upgraded. And he basically did the only thing you could do at this point. You can't force a win on Reach in this situation. What you need is for Reach to suicide into you. So Boxer kind of just set up in the middle of the map. You know, very slow moving. Just macro, macro, macro. Lots of upgrades. And eventually Reach was nice and gave Boxer's army. So Boxer came back and won. You know, that was a very intelligent decision. The highest chance that Boxer could have won that game is, in fact, doing that. Exactly. Just sitting there and waiting, hoping that Reach will throw away all of his units. So, you know, Boxer, all right. Good, good. Next day, Boxer plays Anytime. Now, I don't know if you all saw this. It's a pretty long game on Destination, and Anytime definitely in better shape than Reach right now. And Anytime also, you know, he has a lot of wins over Boxer. Before this match, they were 5-2 and two in Anytime's favor. And Boxer actually played well. Uh, a standard game. Again, he went for a fast expansion. He got Reaver harassed quite a bit. And Boxer just kind of set up a siege line and abused the terrain. So this is kind of an old school play. We don't see as much terrain abuse nowadays as we used to. Well, of course, maps in the old days had much more different terrains like Lost Temple where you can abuse cliffs and gullies and all this stuff all the time. 
But Boxer really abused the terrain, especially over at 9 o'clock, or rather 3 o'clock, sorry. Uh, over at 3 o'clock, Boxer really abused that area with his siege tanks, you know, made any time stop mining quite a bit, and just kind of sat there. Now, any time didn't do anything extremely tricky to try to get a win, but he played well. Uh, he just kept on thinking he could overpower Boxer because Boxer is not known for his macro. He's known for, in fact, losing two macro Protosses. So anytime just try to overpower him and Boxer just kept on using terrain. You know, he used the high ground in his main to help his siege line. He used the cliffs all over the place. And it turned out to be just kind of a standard game that, you know, anytime, yeah, he could have played better. Uh, he could have been a little bit more tricky. But Boxer played a standard, strong game, and he won. So Boxer is doing a great job right now. And it's so exciting to see because this guy is like the father of StarCraft, basically. You know, he's one of the original ones that really helped pro gaming to grow up. And to see him back actually winning some games is exciting as hell. I hope to God he keeps going. It would be awesome to cast, you know, a, a boxer versus not a finals or some, a boxer versus an all even. Wow, 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 wow. That'd be crazy good. All right, so that is that for the, the whole Heritage League. So that's, that's going to end up at E-Star's Soul coming up next week. Make sure you tune into that. Tasteless and I will be casting uh, pretty much everything there. So, uh, you know, tune in. There's going to be a lot of great StarCraft matches. All right, now that is pretty much it for the news this week. Not a whole ton of uh, exciting drama or anything going on. But, you know, there are some great videos that we've put out this week. Go check out the We Made video. That thing has already gotten like 30,000 views around the internet. I guess people like it. Uh, it has Moon and Pure in it. And make sure you check out the Nada one as well. We split them up, but maybe we should have kept them together. Poor Nada is not uh, getting as many people watching him. But kind of interesting points of view from Moon. Uh, I, actually, next week, we are going to put out an interview with uh, a couple other players, Who and Lin, uh, both Warcraft 3 pros, and we're going to talk to them about, you know, some Warcraft 3, but uh, a little bit leaning towards StarCraft 2 and their plans for that. You know, I'm really interested myself to see which War 3 pros are going to try their hand at StarCraft 2 with the big boys. So uh, look out for that next week. Also, uh, you know, a little heritage video we put up, you know, just a couple little tiny interviews. Uh, you might want to check that out. And, well, you know, we're going to do a big name interview again pretty soon here. Uh, we're thinking probably someone like Flash, so if you're interested in that, please do let us know. Uh, of course, if we do do something like that, I will open the forums up for suggestions, for questions for them. Uh, I'll let you know next week sometime, so keep a lookout for that. Uh, so that is just about it here uh, in... Korea for StarCraft and really in the foreigner scene too. That's pretty much all the news that I could possibly talk about right now. So that is it. Thank you for watching. Questions, comments, criticism, always welcome. Have a good night.